Hey guys, Mark here, Randy Worse. Welcome back. Folks, today is Wisdom Friday. Wisdom Friday. <laughs> um, today, folks, we're, our topic that we're going to be talking about is relationships. Relationships. Um, and this message is going to be a message of encouragement to my brothers and sisters, a blessing uh, to all those who are out there. Words of wisdom. Because <clears throat> this is Wisdom Friday. But before we get into it, I want to give a quick shout to all the new subscribers who joined the family. I say welcome. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. But if you just happen to have landed on this channel and the message speaks to you, give it a like, a thumbs up, and hit the subscribe button, join the family. Folks, let's go ahead and get into this message on Wisdom Friday. You know, one of the things, um, for those who are new, um, one of the things that um, I love share doing here is sharing what the Lord is doing in my own life. Um, and one of the areas that the Lord has been really speaking to me is on relationships. We've done a series uh, of messages on developing your personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's number one. That's number one, folks. Your personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the first, that's, that's the number one relationship that you need to, to, to develop. Now, outside of that is your personal, your, your other relationships that you have out there. Maybe with friends, um, with uh, somebody maybe that you're dating in a relationship that you may be considering getting in. This is also very important in the eyes of the Lord. And, um, and one thing that I can tell you, when God, when you have made a serious commitment to be walking with the Lord and you're, you know, dedicated yourself to the walk with the Lord, to be an instrument to be used by God, and you've invited the Lord to take control of every area and every aspect of your life, Guess what? <laughs> God doesn't waste any time. <laughs> he moves in and he starts doing cleanup work. And one of the first areas, folks, that God will do cleanup work in is the area of the people who are in your life, the relationship that you have. There's some that are good that uh, will continue and there's others that will pr be pruned off. And I'm gonna talk about today are the, are the, the areas of pruning. Okay, the errors of pruning that God can do um, based on um, this relationship that you may have that may not be what God wants for you. <clears throat> and um, the thing about God is, is that any relationship that he prunes off, the Lord can replace with other god fearing individuals that will help you and be a blessing to you in your walk with him. So let's get right into it. Um, God can remove people for these various reasons. The first one, they are not in God's plan for your life. Did you hear that, folks? You hear that? They're not in God's plan for your life. There are people that may be that you may have been friends with, that you've walked with, that you've known for a long period of time. But now you have made a fresh commitment to the Lord. You're dedicated to the Lord. Your walk is dedicated to Him. And, um, and God has a plan for your life, and He's taking you in a certain direction. But that individual may not be going in the same direction that you're going. Um, or he may not be, or she may not be in the plan that God has for you. So what the Lord may end up doing is pruning them off, pruning that person off. Because if they continue to remain there with you, they can slow your progress or even a, can, um, in, the, in the worst situation, abort the plan that the Lord has for you. Um, if you continue... Um, in relationship with this sort of individual. So it's really a way that the Lord is protecting you um, in the process of what he has for you. Second thing, and, and, and folks, God always has a good plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. Another area to look at is timing. Folks, <clears throat> this is an area right here. There may be people that are in your life right now or were in your life and the God will, will, will I'll call, he, this person's not being, or these people aren't being pruned off completely. It's just a timing thing. Like right now, God may want you, um, want quiet time and I'll call it me time with him. So, um, so that to remove any distractions or anything like that, the Lord, you know, some of these people that you know that you're around, you know, all of a sudden you see they're not calling anymore. Um, you're not connecting. 
You know, you're, um, you're not hearing from them. And, and even for yourself, you're not even motivated or stirred up to even call them. And it's not because of anything that, um, that um, you know, they're saying there's things that you're at odds or whatever. It's, it's because of the Lord's work. And um, right now, the Lord may be wanting to build you up spiritually, equip you, strengthen you. Um, you getting more into his work, um, girding you up, you know, to walk in holiness and righteousness before him. Um, there may be things that the Lord wants to speak to you, show you, um, because you're going deeper in with him. So there may be people that right now what the Lord will do, he'll put the distance or put the gap or whatever the case may be, maybe for a week, month, two months, six months, even a year. But then he'll reconnect you at, at, at a, I'll call it a future date. So this person is not completely gone from your life, but it's just a season that they may not be there in your life because it's a timing thing. It's all about timing. Romans 9, 9 says, for this is the word of promise. At this time, I will come and Sarah shall have a son. And some translation says, at the appointed time, I will come and Sarah shall have a son. There's always an appointed time for everything, folks. And so even reconnection or everything, God has that appointed time. So you don't need to worry or fret or anything like that. Um, if that person is meant to be, remain a friend in your life, he'll reconnect you down the road. <clears throat> um, third thing, distractions. Folks, that's a big one. Um, there may be people in your life um, that are a distraction. You know, they, um, they're not focused on the things that you're focused on. Meaning that you're going deeper into the things of the Lord. But they may be, you know, wanting to go out, just hang out, <clears throat> you know, maybe partying or whatever the case may be, or or just, you know, um, they're 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 more so interested in the things of this world. While you are trying to build your relationship and your walk with God, um, and now dealing with them, they're only a distraction to you. They're trying to pull you to go here, go there. Um, and, and all of that, folks, is taking away your focus and your attention from the Lord. And if the Lord sees that, that that person's, you know, that's where that person is. And that's what I heard. The scissors may come out. The scissors may come out. And he'll prune that person off. And if that person, um, you know, is not, you know, like I said, you know, God's not going to abort his plan that he has for your life. That plan and, and the plan that the Lord is looking out, if that person is, is a, um, I'll call it a, um, an obstacle or whatever the case of that plan, he may be pruned off. He may, God may prune that person off. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God, the throne of God. But looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Folks, the Lord wants you to keep your focus and your attention on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Looking to Jesus. He's the focus. Not all these other things that we have out there. The news and all the other stuff that we have. All the distractions in the world. All the stuff that, the, that just takes our attention from the Lord. <clears throat> so, be aware of that. Um, the other area, keeping you from getting hurt. There may be somebody that you're considering dating, getting into a relationship with. But folks, <laughs> you know, God can see the end from the, God knows the end from the beginning. That if you connect with that individual, you become, you connect with that individual. Start to develop an emotional, um, um, I'll call it tie to that individual and stuff like that. And, and God sees that that person is not good for you. You know, he can see the headaches. He can see... The, you know, the, the, the crying and all the other stuff. And, and if things are going to be rocky, um, that it's not a, 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 it's not the fit that he has for you. That it's going to be more issues, problems, and all that kind of stuff. And maybe lead you in a direction that he doesn't want you to go. Um, you know, God will keep you from getting hurt from that. So he may prune that person off. Prune that person off, folks. So we have to be aware of that. Psalm 59.9 says... I will wait for you, O oh you, his strength, for God is my defense. God is your defense, folks. He is your defense, <clears throat> and he will protect you.
from things that you not you can't see. You know, God can see the motives and the heart of every person, individual so, that comes into your into your life. People can put up a front and act, you know, like I say, actors and all kinds of stuff, portray a various image and stuff like that um, to not show you who they really are, but they can't fake God. <laughs> they can't fake God. God can see every heart, folks. And if that heart is not, um, yeah, he sees that you're his child. <laughs> he loves you. So he's going to make sure that he, that, um, that he protects you from, you know, potential, um, you know, people that just have, I'll call it wicked or ill motives to come against you. So just keep it, be aware of that. Bad influence. <laughs> if that person, you know, there are people in your life that are a bad influence that want to take you back into the world. You know, God brought you out of the things, you know, various vices, various addictions, various things that were counter to the word of the Lord, you know, has brought you out of all that. But then you have a, a, a person or individual in your life that um, wants to continue to engage in stuff that the Lord brought you out of. Bad influence, folks. Bad influence. The Lord will, again, for your protection, prove them off. Scriptural reference here I have is 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says, do not be deceived. Evil, com evil company corrupts good habits. And in some uh, translation, it says bad company corrupts good character. <laughs> so we have to watch the company that we keep. Not everyone, folks, um, that's around you um, may be a good influence for you, especially if, if you're going the way of the Lord and this person is going the way of the world. <laughs> Doesn't mix, folks. Doesn't mix. Um, next, uh, other area. That person becomes an idol. Say you're you're interested in, in a man or a woman or whatever the case may be that's um, that uh, just caught your eye, and um, you know you think about that person when you wake up. You're thinking about that person during the afternoon. You're thinking of that person um, in the evening and right before you go to bed. That person just rolling your mind. Guess what, folks? That person. Maybe becoming your idol. And I'm going to tell you, God is a jealous God. And he's not going to let you allow you to put any person above him or before him. And if that person, and the Lord sees that person is becoming an idol in your life, bring out the scissors. Bring out the scissors. Potentially bring out the scissors to prune that person off. Because there's not going to be anyone that can come before the Lord. Before the Lord. So let's just keep that in mind. Um... The, uh, the other area that you look at, and that's Exodus 23, is a scriptural reference I have. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. That's Exodus 23. And the last one I have for you guys is, they refuse to give up the things of this world. You may have friends and you may have people, um, or even Christians, that refuse to, um, to give up the things of this world. They want to continue the party, the drinking, the fornicating, the, you know, um, getting out there, smoking, all kinds of stuff. All the, the vices that the world has, pornography, all kinds of stuff that they have. And they've made a decision that's what they want to continue in. The things of this world. But you've made a decision that you're going the way of God. Walking in holiness and righteousness and purity before Him. Doesn't mix. You know, the Bible says, how can two people walk together unless they agree? So, we have to be mindful of that. Um, 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, do not, love the, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You hear that, folks? You hear that? We cannot love the things of this world or walk with or continue to walk with people who love that. Here you are, you're a child of God, and you're walking in one direction, and they're walking in a total opposite direction. And the last thing is drama. Folks, do you know drama kings and drama queens? Every time you go ahead and you go ahead and you get around them, all you leave with is with, you know, um, you know, a headache. Um, there was arguing, fighting, um, confusion, strife. Um, anytime you turn around, there's always some kind of issue, problem, or anything like that. Um, there's no peace. You're never at peace because this person isn't there to edify and to 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 um, you know to help you as far as your walk. But it's just constant drama. And you've probably seen it. It's like a, you know, a, um, um, a bad job. You know, you, you, you don't want to, um, you, 
You don't want to go ahead, when you think about going in, you're just like, oh my gosh, I gotta go in there. And you can't wait to leave. That's how it is. That's how it is, folks. But it's with this individual. So God can go ahead and prune that off. He sees that that's the type of person that this person is. So I love you guys. This is Wisdom Friday. I hope that this message has spoken to many of you guys out there to keep our antennas up, including myself. God loves us. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves us and only wants the best for us. So we have to understand that when, as we walk with him, as we're dedicated to him, that the cleanup process will start. <laughs> and it's not anything funny or weird or strange. If you find yourself more isolated and you find yourself that um, you're in a season of more time, quiet time, there's not a lot of people around and all that kind of stuff here, folks, you're in a great place because God is ready to speak to you. So share, like, and subscribe. If this message speaks to you, hit the subscribe button, join the family. God loves you and only wants the best for you. So we'll see you in the next video.